Today, Taiwan is a leader in public health, but getting there was a road full of obstacles. From malaria to Blackfoot disease, Taiwan has had to face outbreaks of fast-spreading deadly diseases that confounded the top scientists of their day. Today, in our Sunday special report, we visit the dark and painful history of Taiwan's fight against infectious disease, starting with the Spanish flu in the early 20th century. At the start of the 20th century, Taiwan established 11 hospitals under the Japanese colonial administration. In the same period, Europe and the U.S. were embroiled in the heat of World War I. It was that time that a deadly weapon unseen by the naked eye swept the planet. That weapon was the Spanish flu, a pandemic involving the H1N1 virus. In March 1918, at an army barracks in the U.S. state of Kansas, a large number of soldiers began experiencing headaches, high fevers, and other cold-related symptoms. Within just a few short weeks, the epidemic spread from the U.S. to continental Europe. Every day, newspaper headlines would report the number of lives taken by the flu. In October 1918 alone, as many as 200,000 Americans died from the virus. Many public facilities announced closures lasting as long as a year, and police officers began wearing masks on duty. Hospitals became overcrowded, and many cities were forced to put up tents in open spaces to serve as emergency medical stations. From 1918 to 1919, the Spanish flu is estimated to have taken 40 million lives worldwide. In the summer of 1918, the Spanish flu also made its way to Taiwan. By fall, it had developed into an epidemic. Information from the colonial government shows that by June 10th, 70 to 80 of the Japanese military officers stationed in Taiwan were infected. By October 20th, in the second wave of the flu, there were new reports of infections daily, with infections widespread in Geelong. So on November 5th, the colonial government announced orders for disease prevention measures. The colonial government also established health inspection stations at ports and built a quarantine area. To gain control over the spread of the flu, it ordered that all cases of influenza be reported. Police were in charge of health and sanitation, and officers would take estimates of the number of cases and report this to their superiors. Every two days, they would file a report. They would also categorize the cases based on race, with those categories being Japanese, islanders, meaning Taiwanese, and foreigners, the majority of which were referred to as Shinajin, meaning Chinese. This flu epidemic resulted in a total of 44,000 deaths in Taiwan, and the epidemic lasted from 1918 to 1920. In Taiwan at the start of the 20th century, sanitary conditions were relatively bad. This rare photograph shows children afflicted with malaria, which causes inflammation of the spleen. After malaria develops, it causes the whole body to tremble. When Japan first sent military officers to be stationed in Taiwan, roughly 30% of them succumbed to illness. In 1911, the Japanese government enacted malaria prevention measures island-wide. They would have to take a blood sample, and from this sample they would test for the presence of malaria. If malaria was there, they would force the patient to take medicine. The Japanese even thought about how to prevent mosquitoes and bacteria from multiplying. In Taichung, the roads were all made from a 45-degree angle so the sun could shine down from the west and also shine down from the east. This caused a reduction in the number of mosquitoes. The Japanese government's program finally brought Taiwan's malaria epidemic to heel. However, as air raid alarms grew prevalent toward the end of World War II, the Japanese government ordered the public to keep water supplies at home for putting out fires. These water supplies became a hotbed for breeding mosquitoes. Around 1947, another malaria outbreak hit Taiwan. Taiwan had already come under the control of the Kuomintang government, but public sanitation policies had not yet been developed. Estimates from the time show that on average, one out of every five Taiwanese contracted malaria. 
Finally, with the assistance of the U.S.-based Rockefeller Foundation, a malaria research center was established in Pingdong County's Chaozhou Township. Talented students from the National Taiwan University's College of Medicine were recruited by the center to research malaria. The center also enlisted wide-scale use of DDT in the fight against malaria. Later on, they discovered that malaria-bearing mosquitoes normally rest on surfaces in homes. They rest on walls. It was then they realized that inside of people's homes and in pig farms, spraying DDT would be effective in fighting malaria. When they sprayed it, they sprayed it everywhere. Everyone cooperated, so they were successful in controlling the spread of malaria. In the 1950s, there were 1.2 million cases of malaria in Taiwan. Within 10 years, that number was reduced to zero. Taiwan was recognized as having eradicated malaria in 1965. That year was seen as an important milestone for Taiwan's disease prevention. Aside from malaria cases, pre-1960s Taiwan had many people afflicted with goiter, an enlargening of the thyroid gland. With goiter, the neck will become truly enlarged. Xinju County's Qiongning and Liujia townships were where this was seen the most. Almost everyone there was afflicted. When climbing a hill or walking, they would have trouble breathing. During the Japanese colonial era, Japanese physician Kaiwashi Kunio at the Taihoku Imperial University conducted large-scale research into epidemic diseases and published the first transmission map for goiter spread in Taiwan. The main cause of goiter is a lack of iodine in the body. In 1955, National Taiwan University professor Chen Gongbei suggested that the government add iodine to table salt. Originally, they planned to put iodine into drinking water, thinking this would be more convenient. The water supplier would add in the iodine and it would naturally dissolve in the water. If you wanted to add iodine to salt, you needed special machinery. Everyone needs to eat salt, and when you eat salt, you will consume the iodine. In Qiongling and Zhudong, they conducted an experiment. Qiongling had iodine added to its salt, and Zhudong did not have it added. After three years into the research, there was a marked difference between the two townships. So with funding from UNICEF and from the U.S., we started putting iodine in all table salt. By 1971, the rate of goiter developing in infants had been reduced from 21% to 4 Work on goiter prevention had come to an end. Looking back on the history of disease prevention, it is impossible to avoid talking about the year 1956 when people in Tainan's Anding Township began developing Blackfoot disease. The feet become black as coal and no medicine would clear it up. It's so painful that many people commit suicide. It's quite pitiful. In those years, it was common to see children with amputated feet. What was worse is that even after amputation, they were not cured of the condition forever. Black marks would still appear and would ultimately require further amputation. I saw one older lady whose two feet had soles that were so dark it looked as if she were wearing black shoes. In the majority of cases, it appears on the feet. However, there are some people whose fingertips will fall off. When they fall off, that's not the end of it. Sometimes, after the fingertips and the toes fall off, the soles of the feet start to fall off. The gangrene will climb up the legs, spreading all the way to the knees, and then even the knees need to be cut off. Under Professor Chen's leadership, a Blackfoot disease research team was formed at National Taiwan University. The team began researching the causes of this strange disease. During their separate investigations, Professor Qi, Zheng, and Chen Gongbei's team discovered around the same time that well water was the cause of Blackfoot disease. Upon further research, they found that among the various heavy metals found in well water, there was the highest abnormal concentration of arsenic. But fixing the drinking water of several hundred thousand people is no easy task. The Taiwanese provincial government's public health department seized the opportunity to test the water quality of more than 8,000 wells nationwide.
They also began large-scale installation of water pipes to ensure a clean water supply for the entire public. 台湾的这些数据哈，后来被世界卫生组织跟呃美国环保署拿去。This data from Taiwan was later used by the World Health Organization and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to develop standards for safe levels of arsenic in drinking water. So this calamity that struck those living on Taiwan's southwestern coastline, these hardships they endured, was turned into a standard used to protect people all over the world. Arsenic can be a cause of cancer. This is only known from Taiwanese data because tests on animals with arsenic cannot prove it to be a carcinogen. Only humans can be poisoned by arsenic. So it was through this epidemic data that we know arsenic is a carcinogen, and proving that it leads to cancer in humans was done through this data from Taiwan. Taiwan made real progress in public health, largely because its people grew keenly aware of the importance of sanitation. This film, created in 1969, was a government information campaign. Everything from the new sofas to the immaculate kitchen seems out of place in these rural homes, and they were clearly orchestrated with care. Films like these were propaganda to produce a certain public consciousness, one that prizes sanitation. In those days, banners hung high in the streets, urging the public to be sanitary. Once a year, Taipei held mass events in which everybody cleaned their house at the same time. That was called household hygiene. They would come to our home every year to do an inspection. Back then we had no fridge, so our leftovers would just be covered with a net. We cleaned up and everything including the toilet had to be clean. The government was quite powerful at the time. Everyone had to cooperate. As the public attached more importance to cleanliness and sanitation, Taiwan gradually eradicated malaria and Blackfoot disease. This white building situated along the coastline in Tainan once housed those afflicted with Blackfoot disease. Today the building is left in disrepair, left behind by a society that has said goodbye to this chapter of the past. <laughs>